Welcome back to Anderson's Smoke Show. It is almost Turkey Day, so it's time to start thinking about what you're gonna do for your family this holiday season. Today, I've got a 13 pound bird that I wet brined overnight. I'm gonna spatchcock the hell out of this. We're gonna make one awesome turkey, so stick around and see how we do it. If you're new here, my name is Andrew, and I'm an engineer, so everything that you see here at Anderson Smoke Show is gonna be technical and to the point. Whether that's grill reviews, grill assemblies, or turkey prep, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to be successful. Now let's get into it. If you're anything like me, you might be apprehensive when it comes to cooking for your family and friends. I have a fear of disappointing people, so I've always been a little afraid of cooking in front of a crowd. But I've been cooking these turkeys for a few years and I've perfected my rubs, my brines, uh, my injections, and everything involved in cooking the turkey. So I'm gonna share those tips with you today. Now, if you haven't already seen my ultimate turkey prep video, I'll put a link right up here. It's gonna show you all the ins and outs, the tips and tricks, and the different methods in which you can prepare your turkey this holiday season. Now today, with this bird, I did a wet brine. We're gonna talk about that. I'm going to be injecting it. I'm gonna be seasoning it. I'm gonna be spatchcocking it. Not necessarily in that particular order, but I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know for this method. So first and foremost, this turkey brined for about 24 hours in a wet brine. I use a concoction that I've perfected over the last few years. That's using some vegetable broth, some herbs and spices, brown sugar, salt, and I put it in for at a minimum 24 hours, but ideally with a wet brine, you're looking for two to three days. Make sure that whatever you're doing, you have a container that's appropriate for it. Now, because this is a 13 pound turkey, I used a two and a half gallon zipper bag and I'm able to fit this in there along with a gallon of my brine. It fills everything up nicely. I zip it tight and I put it down in the vegetable drawer in my refrigerator and I leave that zipper up top. That way there's no chance of it leaking. Leave it there for two to three days. In my case, I only had 24 hours to prepare, but I'm not afraid because this turkey is gonna be delicious. Now, before we do any other work, before we season, before we inject, we need to spatchcock it. Now, if you're new to this method, essentially what we need to do is take the turkey and cut the spine out and unfold it. Using this method is going to allow it to cook faster, more thoroughly and evenly, and it's gonna result in a really juicy and tender bird. So let's get started with that. All right, when it comes to spatchcocking, you need a good set of poultry scissors or kitchen scissors. You need something that is sturdy enough to cut through the bones. Now, you've, you may have spatchcocked a chicken. A turkey is basically the same thing, but some of those bones can be a little thicker and a little harder to cut through. Basically, your spine is about an inch and a half wide here. So you wanna cut straight up on both sides to remove that. So just grab onto the tail here, go a little to the right, and you can hear them bones cracking. Oh yeah, there we go. And just work your way all the way up one side. There's a big bone there. There we go. And this is a little grotesque. So if you're not into butchering your own meat, might not be the method for you or just have somebody else do it for you. All right, so as you can see, we've got one side completely open. Now, because I'm extremely right-handed, I'm gonna spin the bird around and I'm gonna start from the neck this side, this time. When all else fails, change the angle a little bit. Went from the bottom and there is the turkey spine. This is the result of a successful spatchcock. In order for this to lay flat, you gotta take something sturdy or a sharp knife, give it a nice little whack there. Put a nice slice into it and I can just go like this. And like those chiropractor videos, we'll just snap that back in half. There's a ton of skin up here around the neck cavity and I'll just cut a V-neck t-shirt in. Just keep it so that the breast is covered. And any other fat or anything that needs trimmed off, if I see any feathers, I'll pluck them. But essentially, now that we've got this out and we've got the turkey laying appropriately, it's time to get it seasoned up. Now, I've found over the course of the last few years that a good herb-based rub is my favorite when it comes to turkey. So I've got my Spiceology Turkey Rub, 
and I think it is the perfect blend for turkeys. Since we've got this thing opened up, we'll start with the back here. I'm just gonna get in here and I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit. Now it might look like it's already been seasoned and that's the remnants of my wet brine. I don't rinse that off afterwards because that's flavor. So we're gonna leave as much flavor as possible. All right, now we'll flip this over. Now, a lot of times with poultry, I will go in and I will put oil on, on the bird. And today I'm not gonna use an oil binder. This is juicy from being in that brine. So I'm just gonna season right on top of that moisture. I've got a concoction that I've perfected over the last few years. It is a butter base. I use two sticks of butter. I use brown sugar, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and one of my favorite barbecue rubs. I do this to taste. I personally like a little bit of a sweeter hint than a saltier hint. So use it in moderation, taste it just a little bit, but just be sure to mix that up. Now you're gonna want a syringe. You want a syringe with the largest diameter needle that you can get because some of this can be chunky or it can be thick and you wanna be able to push that through. So I like to stir it up and make sure that it's nice and stirred and I leave the spoon in the bowl and I use the syringe and suck from above the spoon. It helps prevent the clumps from you know, getting in there. Now that we've got that injection ready and in the syringe, I like to do a full syringe at a minimum in each breast. So what I will do is I will push this in deep. I will do a half of syringe. Then I will back out and I will change the direction and I will go another half syringe. Now it'll probably squirt out a little bit and that's because you just pumped a bunch of butter and seasoning into that breast. But we'll move on, stir it up a little bit. We'll get a full syringe. We'll go into this breast. And like I said, we'll go all the way in, pump about half of that in, back it out, change the direction, pump the other half. Now to your surprise, I also inject the thighs and the legs, but I only need about a half a syringe in each leg and about a half of syringe in each thigh. So I'm just gonna pump it right in. Just gotta get it through that skin. And we'll go about a half a syringe here. There we go, half a syringe. And we're gonna do the same in the thighs. You just gotta get it in there, do about a half. You'll see them plump up real nice. We'll do another half over here. Now that we've got it seasoned, we've got it injected, it's spatchcocked, we've got the grill running at 225 degrees, we're gonna go get that in. So when it comes to turkeys, you're gonna see all different temperatures and sometimes I'll even vary in different directions. But today with my pellet grill, with this Camp Chef Smoke Pro SG30, I can control the amount of smoke and I can control the temperature. So I'm gonna do one hour at 225 degrees smoke level 10 because I wanna pound the smoke into that turkey. I'm using the Lumberjack Supreme Blend, which is one of my favorite blends. We've got some oak, we've got some hickory, we got some cherry, and it's gonna be great on these turkeys. So I've got my turkey here on my cutting board and I'm just going to carefully slide that off just like so. You see that perfect spatchcock pose. I got the wings tucked back. I got the hips kicked out, feet tucked in. It is ready to go. 225 degrees, one hour. Then we're gonna bump that sucker up to 285 to 305 degrees. Somewhere in there, that's gonna speed up the process. You're looking with a 13 pound bird, we're looking like three and a half hours or so. Not too bad. It's always best to monitor the temperature while you're cooking a turkey. So what I like to do is I like to take a probe and put it in each breast. Today I'm gonna to be using the Thermoworks Smoke. It is a wireless thermometer system. It's got two probe ports. I can monitor it from in the house or across the yard. Doesn't matter, I can keep an eye and know the progress of my turkey. I will be using my Thermapen 1 and I will be using that to spot check as we get closer to the 165 degree mark in the breast. But for now, we'll monitor the temperature. We'll go inside, watch some football. See you in a bit. 
got my Thermapen MK4 here. We should be reading right around 165 degrees here on the spatchcock. Got 167, 165, 167. I think it's time to get this off. These spatchcock turkeys are always super tender and they're very easy to separate, you know, like the thighs from the breast. So it's best to take a couple spatulas. We'll just get that thing up on the board like that and get this thing shut, take it over to the table. All right, we are just under four hours and this 13 pound spatchcock turkey is ready to go. Now don't forget, we wet brined this. We seasoned this up with the Spiceology Turkey Rub. We injected it with my secret recipe, which is no longer a secret, and we smoked it. 225 degrees for an hour and then the rest of the time at 285 degrees. This turkey looks and smells great. So it's time to cut into it and see how we did. So the true testament in my mind is always the breast. Dark meat is almost always perfect to me. As long as it's obviously cooked, it's super simple. Now, the white meat is where it's at because that really is a true testament to the amount of moisture that's left in the turkey and as well as the flavor because the white meat typically tends to be a little drier. So I cut the breast out here. We'll slide this off to the side and I'm going to slice the turkey breast here. It is rather hot. We'll give that just a moment to cool down. So I trimmed up the turkey here while we let it cool. It's time to give it a try. And like I said, we're gonna try the breast because that is the true testament of how well you did. Don't forget, we brined it, we injected it, we seasoned it, we spatchcocked it, and we smoked it. Let's give it a try. Mm. Now that there is incredibly juicy. You can taste the injection down into the breast. It is phenomenal. It's super moist. I mean, you can see this. Look at that. That's turkey breast. When's the last time you saw turkey breast that moist? It's been a while, hasn't it? Hands down, that's some phenomenal turkey. And we did that in about four hours or less. So if you want to impress your guests and you don't have all the time in the world to get that perfect presentation, that Thanksgiving pose, then follow this recipe and I'll see you next time at Anderson Smoke Show.